Everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're going to show you how to adjust your shock absorbers for preload or sag so your bike rides correctly. So what I have right here is a shock absorber body. Uh, this happens to be one of our Icon standard shocks and I have removed the spring from it so we can actually see uh, the body as well as the piston here. Now shock absorbers end up doing two things. They compress and they rebound, return to rest position. So you hit a bump, compresses, comes off the bump, rebounds. However, when you first sit on the bike, the shocks are supposed to compress a little bit. Now a lot of people don't realize that and they don't adjust the shocks for that compression. Now they can compress too much or not enough. And trying to get that perfect balance between uh, too much and not enough is called setting the rider sag or setting the preload. And that's going to be done by adjusting the tension on the spring. We're going to show you how to adjust that in a minute. But I'm going to explain to you how much the shock should compress. Now if we look at the shock right here, this is the total travel of the shock. It's between the body and the bottom of this bump stop here. That's the maximum amount the shock will actually compress in there. When you go to sit on the bike, that shock should compress about 20 to 30 percent on average of that travel length. So on this one I've gone ahead and marked kind of a little window here about how much of this shock should compress when you sit on it. So shock is at rest, it's fully extended, you hop on the bike, it should compress so far when you sit on it. Now why is this important? It's important because when you're riding a bike and let's say uh, you hit a bump and you go up, the shock not only compresses but it rebounds and as you're kind of bumping down the road, if the shock is fully extended and it needs to rebound, it doesn't have any travel. It needs a little bit of distance to expand a hair as you're, as you're going down the street. So that's why the rebound preload is so super, super important to do. So uh, that's kind of the explanation of what, what it is. And it's going to apply to all these type of shocks that are found on our vintage Hondas. We're actually going to do the adjustment here on this Shop 360 and, you know, just get it right. It's a quick adjustment. It's done easy, but it's more important to understand what's going on versus the actual process of making the adjustment. So we have our, our Shop CB360 up on the center stand, which means that the shock is all the way extended as far as it will go. We also have the spring set as loose as it can possibly go down here on the preload adjuster. So this is what we're going to be making our adjustment on. I just have a Sharpie here, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball eh, about a third of the travel. So it's, this is more of a rule of thumb. I said 20 to about 30% needs to be compressed. It doesn't have to be exact because it's going to vary based on rider weight and bike weight. But that's going to give me, let me know about how much it's going to compress right there. So uh, there's my reference mark. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop on the bike and we're going to see how far it squishes down. If it squishes down uh, in that right range there, we're okay. If it squishes down <clears throat> too much, we'll have to tighten up the spring so we get a little bit more preload on the shock so it gives a little bit more force uh, to keep the bike up. Wow, the dots are already at the level, <clears throat> and I haven't even hopped on the bike yet. This is just I haven't. This is just the weight of the bike compressing the shock that much. So if I sit on it, it's going to go even further. So let me hop on. And let me show you how far it's going to go. Way further. So that means we need to tighten up the spring. So let's put the bike on the center stand. We'll take the spring up a notch, and we'll try it again. All right, so I'm going to tighten the spring up one notch, and a lot of got, you guys have this tool. This is a shock adjustment tool. It usually comes with the shock absorbers. And I'm going to be turning this lower adjuster here one click. You'll see it as I rotate it. And on this one, it's going to have to go this direction, the wrench in there. Ready? And click one notch. 
We'll do that on the other side. We'll hop on the bike and do the same thing again, see where the dot ends up. All right, let's just roll the bike off the stand and see what it does. All right, that's better. We still see our dot. It's not at the level of the, uh, the base of the body. Let me hop on the bike here and let's see what changes. It's gone. All right, that means I'm going to go up another notch on the spring. All right, let me hop on the bike now. Kick, kick stand off. Hmm? The, dot the dot is right there at the level. So I can see the dot is exactly at the top of the, uh, the, top of the shock body. So for, for my rider weight and the bike's weight, that's the perfect adjustment for this particular set of shocks. Okay, so I hope that sheds a little bit more light on how to adjust your rear shocks for your bike, your rider weight, the bike's weight, and also any particular loads you might have, a passenger, saddlebags, etc., and also even for how you ride. Now, the rule of thumb, again, is about 20 to 30 percent of the shock's travel needs to be compressed when you're sitting on the bike. Again, it's a rule of thumb. It's not approximate, but that's what we're trying to shoot for. Uh, it's also good to have a friend help you. It makes it a lot easier so they can see what's going on uh, when you make the adjustments. I also want to give a shout-out to Jeff at Icon for enlightening us on how to go about uh, adjusting the shocks. So we can enlighten you. Again, this is Brendan with Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our newsletter via the website, and of course, subscribe to us right here on our YouTube channel. We will see you next time.